Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we are going to be launching a series of Mars missions because it is a Mars transfer window and we begin with Mars Base 1. We do seem to have a floaty nose cone issue here and I'm not going to roll it back to fix that because of course uh, that would take time and we are right at the Mars window and we have a lot of missions to launch so we do not want to take that time and hopefully it'll be all right regardless and yeah uh, I don't know why it does that but it does that sometimes uh, this bottom one is the correct core but we don't actually have a launch script uh, put in there for this particular launcher I figured that out just now uh, so I restarted the recording and we will uh, load in the new launch script now and hopefully I've got it written right but I don't know I haven't tested it so there's a Fiji 3.4 I could have sworn we've launched a 3D uh, Fiji 3.4 before but maybe not I mean we must have right with the previous Mars Base 1 I don't understand anyway maybe I had used a different launch script and that had worked as well but apparently uh, to do this. So here we go. Let's see if this works. Now let me throw myself down. Okay. Okay, the three F1s. The core has the four J2s. Those will light after a certain amount of time, I think 75 seconds. Okay, ignition of the J2 engines. That should be at their maximum efficiency. It is. Uh, basically at this altitude they already have their vacuum efficiency or close to it. So no performance loss there by igniting them right now. The g-forces are pretty high and none of these engines actually throttle. We might be overshooting quite a lot. We'll see. Then again we're going to lose the boosters soon. Hopefully they'll fall backwards instead of launching forwards, it depends on the timing. Perfect timing, good, except they seem to have a weird roll. <laughs> I don't know why they have a re weird roll, but that's fine, that's fine. I'll take it. Okay, and it doesn't look like it's too steep because we only have a 0.86g thrust to weight ratio right now, and two minutes time to apoapsis will keep us okay. Okay, fairing separation. Um, Mars Base 1 is just a really tiny container crew cabin with a whole lot of supplies and of course landing apparatus but mostly just supplies, the antenna, parachutes hopefully we'll do a better job this time I did minor changes but nothing significant it's just down to whether I can land it properly or not okay end of the core stage and start of the second stage There we go. So, we need 2,300 to make orbit, which leaves us with tons of fuel to actually make the transfer, about 4,500, assuming that this is reading correctly, which is an interesting assumption. So, yep, but it's looking good. Okay, we are making orbit here, and the game is paused, and stop. Okay. 275 by 239 and we have 4600 meters per second left let me plot for Mars okay we could definitely have carried something a little bit heavier on this because we only need 3600 meters per second and we've got like a thousand extra but uh, this gets us this sort of pass and then we're going to have to do some sort of correction so that we can hopefully get it as much in line with the other missions here as possible or yeah I mean as much as possible at least a tangency point would be good and uh, that will make me feel a little bit better but yep not that this can rendezvous with anything it doesn't have a docking port or anything like that and nor is it meant to let's get the solar panels out one of the nicer things about using a J2 stage for the transfers is that it's fairly quick um, you don't have much inaccuracy because of the timing of the burn. Okay, it's very stable. Ignition. A 
Okay, getting ready for shutdown and shutdown. Okay, four meters per second off. Oh, we have a little bonus moon encounter in the middle. That's fine. That's a very distant moon encounter, so it's not affecting us very much. And we seem to have a Mars encounter already. That's good. Sometimes that doesn't happen. But let's check. Uh, actually, that may or may not be Mars. Oh, wait. Uh, it is. There is a Mars encounter. Let's see. And RCS seems to be enough to give us some correction to it. But I think I'll leave further correction to a mid-course adjustment. Okay, that looks like an approach that's somewhat compatible with our previous launches. It's in fact very much in line with them. Except the periapsis is a bit offset. Their periapsis was over here. This one will be over here, so... A little bit off in that respect, but otherwise okay. And that correction will be in 72 days and only costs about 10 meters per second. So, no problems at all. Mm -hmm. So, curve alarm clock, add this alarm, and that's on its way to Mars. Nice to see some missions head off to Mars without any problems after the previous episode. So, uh, next up, and we could have started rolling it out already, but launch pad needs 21 hours to recondition, and... I suppose we'll send one Ares Pod G2 out first. Okay, the Ares Pod G2 launches on the Fiji 2R1. And let's see how far off we are from Mars. Well, the moon technically. Um, 14 degrees, it's probably not too big a deal. I hope. I'm. Uh, it's going in the wrong direction, so I don't want to time warp. But otherwise, we'll take an extra day, so... I would rather launch now and actually let's load it into the Thor Delta unit. All right, so without further ado, run Fiji 2R1. Okay, ignition. And launch. Very healthy thrust weight ratio on this one, of course. Okay, boosters are off, and boosters are separating. Quite a high time to wap wapsis. I hope the launch script figures that out. Okay, about to complete the core stage here. And separation of the engine section, which probably won't survive. And the tank. And ignition of the J2 engine. Burning for 8 minutes and 20 seconds in total. We need mm, 3,700 to get to orbit, so it doesn't look like this stage can do it on its own, which is a problem, isn't it? Okay, I think this Delta V reading is incorrect, is what's going on here, because otherwise this is going up much faster than that's going down. I've, I've encountered this before, so... Hopefully everything will be alright. We are starting to go down, but that's fine. Our apoapsis is too high anyway. Okay, orbits. Well, still less than I would like. 2,947 meters per second. So I'm not entirely sure what to do about that, except for just have it head on its way. And maybe uh, use a tanker to refuel it once it gets there. Let me decouple that nose cone off, because that's a tiny bit more, maybe. Okay, well, yeah, let's just get it on its way, and we'll deal with it on the back end. I take it back. I don't think we can deal with this on the back end, because the heat shield is in the way of the engines of the Ares Pod G. So we're actually going to have to hook up some sort of tug to this. I have an idea. Uh, I think we could probably rendezvous with the Nerva Tug with this, but I don't know if the Nerva Tug has this docking port. Docking port propellant only. So, before boil off gets crazy, we'll have to check on that. Also, it turns out that our relative inclination of like, it was I think 13 degrees to the moon, 
has produced a much more expensive transfer over to Mars, but I used MechJab to auto plot it, so maybe I could have figured out something that would cost less. But I figured out that maybe we couldn't use the engines before I got to fiddling around with the maneuver node anyway. So let's take a look at the location of our Nerva tug and see if it's got the right docking port. Yeah, as I expected, this is an Apollo docking system and so cannot be used to push our intended payload. On the other hand, we do have a UDMH depot sitting here, so we could use that. We could use various other things as well. Certainly I'm going to want to edit this Ares Pod G2. Maybe we should put it on a larger launcher. Okay, I edited the second Ares Pod G2 mission in order to add an extra F1 booster and extend the burn times of the core and the upper stage. I'm working on the light lander here because I'll use this to dock to the existing Ares Pod G because it has the right docking port and so they'll transfer to Mars by using by doing half of the burn with the Ares Pod G's J2 stage and the other half with this J2 stage. The thing is we need to do some extra fitting here and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't much boil off on this tank and you'll note that right now the changes I've made will take 51 minutes so and let's put the fairings back on because that's part of it so 51 minutes very interesting uh, the thing is when I try and add radiators to keep this tank cool well that's 15 hours but the interesting thing was when I tried to put one of them on it went down to 27 minutes which I thought was fascinating so Without adding this radiator, which had not been on the original craft, it takes 51 minutes to edit this. Uh, how much for two? Three minutes. Oh, it's down to three minutes. It'll only take three minutes to edit this. I don't care. I mean, uh, 15 hours is fine as well. Three of them? Seven hours. And then four of them? Come on. I'm sure it's quite confused right now also. 15 hours. Um, so somehow it has a negative build time when you only put one or two. What about the other radiators? I mean, this is important information, I feel. Um, so this three days, wow, okay. Uh, let's just have one. That's eight hours, so that seems to be proper. That's multiplying properly, okay. How many do we need is the question. This here seems pretty confident with just two. It seems to be in the green. Should I trust the KSB Interstellar Thermal Mechanics Helper on this? Maybe. Let's go with it. And we'll go with three minutes. I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, three minutes, okay, fine. I mean, of course, having only two helps because it's less extra mass. So we might as well. And it's not super critical. I mean, we would like to limit boil off, but it's not going to be horrible. Now, this is going to have some trouble rendezvousing, but we do have extra fuel in this tank here for running the RCS up there. We've got RCS down here, and we have to dock with this. The other portion will just have to hold steady. But I don't know if this is quite enough. So I'm going to boost this. And that's a fair amount, but... We don't have any sort of OMS engine here. Well, I can fix that. These are configured to Arizona N204, and our favorite OMS engine in the world, uh, well, our favorite engine in the world altogether, is the Gemini Lander engine, which for some reason is in fuel tanks. I don't know why. Okay, so we'll add two of these. And we'll increase the size of these tanks. Actually, they're, they're spherical tanks. We should just pump that up. We'll give some room. And we're going to increase the size of these. Hope I'm not going too far. 265 meters per second to try and rendezvous. And then I'm going to add another set of these thrusters up top.
really we've oh well of course I haven't finished filling this up yet let's fill that up but we have sort of burdened the stage a little bit more with the extra hypergolic fuel but I think I'm even gonna burn in it some more still for all the things I've changed 11 hours of edits is not too bad okay while waiting for those changes to happen actually they, they've already completed while this one was rolling out but I decided to launch our spaceport extension and we are going to move that into the Saturn core there and there's a Fiji 551 certainly no lack of power here so here we go ignition and launch all right first stage separation and the second stage has ignited properly all right second stage is done and third stage is good and we'll need about 500 meters per second to complete this burn and we should be fine unfortunately this could not give a boost to our other mission because docking port on top was uh, Apollo docking system still should probably put some more stuff on here take advantage of the Delta V it has some missions end up having too much Delta V, other missions seem to have too little. Okay, we are in orbit. Okay, turning to ignite for the Trans-Mars injection burn. And we're close enough, I think. I'm wondering about the timing of this. Maybe we're a little bit too early here. Let me wait an extra little bit of time because it's got 5,000 meters per second in the stage. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right, it's unstable right now. Settle. Unlike most engines, it doesn't show its state in as uh, icon color in the staging. Ignition. And we should totally get these solar panels out. Okay, getting ready to shut down. And shut down. The maneuver was wandering away from us. Got a lot of extra Delta V. Okay, we have completed the burn. And I have also plotted a mid-course adjustment here in 63 days. And separated from the J2 stage. So we are good. So this is on its way without any problems, as you might expect from a mission launched by the equivalent of a Saturn V. So it's got its maneuver. All right, so let's get to uh, the adjusted missions now. That's really all we have left to worry about. Uh, so Light Lander and Ares Pod G2, I guess I'll take care of the Light Lander first. Let's roll that out. And that has to rendezvous with the existing Ares Pod G2 already in orbit. Okay, well my instinct is to try and launch this manually instead of using KOS because it'll be easier for me to make sure that we don't have much relative inclination uh, when we try to rendezvous, of course, and we don't have that much fuel with the Gemini lander engines. So that might be a good idea, but Maybe I'll just let KOS handle it and we'll see how well it does. I'll get uh, I'll time warp until it's within one degree and we'll see how far we end up. Okay, so that's one degree and in the Saturn unit, I'll say, well, let's throw down here and say run PG2R1 and let's go. Alright, and we're off. Of course, the launch script isn't uh, meant to do rendezvous per se, it just goes to a particular inclination. So it's all a matter of timing. 
to actually match the inclinations. Of course, we used this same launch script for the previous launch, the Ares Pod G2's launch. Alright, boosters are out. And separated. Okay, well, I think I'll have to manually take care of the fairings here. Alright, separation of the engine segment, which really isn't necessary because there's no way you can retrieve it, but I decided to keep the decoupler in for the sake of using the launch script. Okay, ignition of the J2. And onward to orbit. Currently a 0.78 degree inclination difference. I'm worried about how much of a penalty carrying the extra fuel for the Gemini lander engines actually entails. Maybe it ended up being too much. We'll see. Okay, about to make orbit here. We are definitely in the lower orbit. Relative inclination, one degree. So maybe I should have just tried to match inclinations in the first place. Okay, there we go, 217 by 168, nice shutdown, and let's close it off. 3,600 left, I don't know if that'll help us, but of course we'll be burning some mass. Oh, shoot. Feed pressure too low. Hmm. Right, because they're not technically attached to, I should have attached them directly to these tanks instead. Okay, well, there goes that idea. I think we're just going to have to send this over to to Mars directly instead of trying to use this to save that airy spot G2. Frankly, that thing might be more trouble than it's worth. Okay, well, uh, so there goes that idea. Let me plot for Mars then. Unfortunately, because we matched inclinations with the Ares Pod G2, we are in a worse off situation as far as the Delta V required to transfer because that was placed into an unfortunate orbit. So that's not great. Uh, ship manifest isn't popping up. I don't know why. I'm gonna check whether these can provide propulsion despite potentially being blocked by the heat shield. It would seem so. Okay, so what we're gonna do is... I mean, if we attempt the rendezvous, it still won't have enough Delta V to do things, will it? Hmm... Should we just burn off this fuel? I can't apparently get ship manifest to agree to cooperate. Alright, I guess we'll try and do the rendezvous. I mean, I think it's the best thing to do. We'll use those engines on the lander itself, not, uh, yeah, the light lander itself to try and handle it. So let me figure out how to manage this approach. Okay, well I've made the rendezvous but it hasn't been the best of ideas. We've almost finished up all this fuel. Uh, we've kept the fuel up here for the most part uh, and also almost finished up all of that extra fuel so uh, we're sending a lot less to Mars and we still we're still not sure that we have enough to actually make the transfer so it's a big question mark right now on the bright side we should be able to dock with the other portion if necessary we can abandon either side of the mission in order to rescue the other side in other words we could abandon the light lander in order to Make sure that the Ares Pod G2 gets to where it needs to be, or we could abandon the Ares Pod G2 to make sure the light lander is okay. But hopefully it won't come to that. Oh, and then hopefully... Okay, that wasn't an extra ignition. Good. Okay. Should be in line. Alright, we have docked. Okay. Alright. So that'll be 1,587, and then we'll have whatever's left over there, which I'm not entirely sure exactly how much we'll have. And then we will see. Okay, but let me uh, replot for Mars. Okay, here we are, and we are turning to the node. 
All right, well, we better get going. Let me check that the fuel is settled and ignition. All right, now that uh, that J2 is ignited, we can pump the fuel up. from these RCS things. Not that it's much. Okay. Yeah, we're way late compounding our other issues. Okay. Decouple. And control from here. Oh not the reaction wheel. Well, it says we have 2,500, so just enough, though again, we're late, so we're going to have to make a correction somehow. Managed to be enough, though. That's nice. Barely. Barely enough. Okay, should be good enough. Ignition. And let's pump this fuel up. Still not even half that tank. Okay, let's see. Make sure that we stop the engines on time. Or the engine on time. If we so happen to get some sort of encounter. And we are not getting an encounter like that. Mmm, that doesn't seem particularly great. Okay, well, let's just get on with it. So this is completely depleted. Decouple. Uh, let's time warp away from those fairings. So now we have these backward facing RCS thrusters that we can use and some fuel there to make a correction. We should probably extend these solar panels as well. Okay, at least we'll have an encounter here. That's nice. And we're gonna need a mid-course adjustment though. But those haven't been costing too much. Hopefully this one won't cost that much either. Okay, well, I've got the uh, adjustment plotted. It'll cost 32 meters per second, which hopefully we can do with the fuel stored in that heat shield tank. And um, once the game decides to load it, I mean this tank right here. I don't know if that's gotta be enough though. We will see. Otherwise, we might have to use some of the fuel here. But in any case, I intend to get these two missions into orbit around Mars successfully and we can put an alarm for that correction. Alright, we do have one more mission that we want to send to Mars and I might as well get on with it and that's the other Ares Pod G2 this time with three F1 engines as boosters and hopefully that'll have enough Delta V on its own to get to Mars. So let's get that underway and we'll call that the episode. So with this mission, the timing of the boosters hasn't changed, it's just a number of boosters. So we should just be able to use the same launch script as the Fiji 2R1, I think. Uh, let's find out. It's got a little bit more thrust to weight ratio, so it might end up too high. Maybe. But it's not that much different. Alright, we are off. Three F1s and one RD270. Well, it's definitely going to be a bit high. Okay, boosters have separated. Alright, we have separation, well, of the engine cluster. And then the stage. And then ignition of the J2. Well, we need 3,300 to make orbit, maybe 3,200, 
that leaves us with 3,600 meters per second, uh, roughly speaking, to make the transfer. It'll all depend on how much it actually costs. Uh, the previous one was 4,000, but that was because we had some inclination with respect to the ecliptic that we shouldn't have had. Sometimes you want that, but in this case we didn't. Alright, we have made orbit and sort of lopsided. Hopefully we're burning out of the periapsis, in which case we'll be alright. 3,625 meters per second. And then we have the little bit of fuel that's on that uh, mini stage attached to the heat shield. So anyway, let me plot it out. Well, it's not the worst situation possible. It's halfway between the periapsis and apoapsis, but still it's requiring more than we actually have. Um, the RCS could help, maybe? Or, you know, we could just dump this fuel, but we'll see. I suppose we get some delta V from releasing the nose cap. Maybe to make off, uh, uh, make up for some of the boil off. Okay, well, let me try and use some RCS to start us off. That's tedious, but possible. Okay, getting ready for main engine ignition. Ignition. Okay, and we proceed. I'll just keep holding down the RCS so that we can use that fuel as well. Okay, we ended up 74 short. And, well, I could try using this RCS. Probably wouldn't do too badly. I mean, we're very close to the intended track here, as you can see. So, yeah, let's just let it uh, run out. Uh, though, I, I wonder if there's RCS blowing in here, too. Uh, I don't see the thrusters firing, so maybe while they're in here, they're not firing. So that's good. All right, physical time warp for a bit. I mean, as you can see right now, it's not a trivial amount of delta V in these tanks. Okay, we have actually expended all of the RCS fuel there. Uh, we have not gotten an encounter. 26 minutes after the node, we will now separate. And now we've got this bit. I feel like we should probably turn around, so um, retrograde actually. So I can use these thrusters on that bit. And that's looking fine. Let me plot the mid-course adjustments, which hopefully won't cost more than the others did. Okay, well the mid-course adjustment node will take 12.4 meters per second, and that'll be in 54 days, and we should have enough fuel in this to handle it. Otherwise, our tanks seem almost topped off probably good enough. Alright, let's add that alarm. And so next time, uh, we might want to bring some crews back. I'm especially looking at uh, Spaceport 2 here. The food is the thing. 184 days when our Ares Pod A comes back in 242. That's what really, really what I want to get to. Um, so if we could bring those guys back and maybe that'll be it. I think we can uh, wait on Moonport 1's crew. They seem to have enough. But we'll bring them back after we bring back the Mars crew. So, yeah, uh, we'll bring back the people on Spaceport 2, hopefully. I We might have to leave one behind, depending on whether the capsule there already can carry enough. Probably it can only carry three. And after that, we'll handle these mid-course adjustments for the various Mars missions we just recently launched. And then we will bring back our Mars crew finally. Hopefully safely, though, I'll have to do some altitude testing beforehand to see what altitude would be best. And so that we won't, won't flood that on, you know, I mean, just a random guess otherwise. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, but with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
and I'll see you next time.